What's up guys, this is Heiss. Today we are looking at how you install mods for DRL Valley. I got a lot of questions from people, both in comments and in direct messages, asking how mods are installed or why the mods don't work. So I figured I would go through and show you the couple things that you need to do. So if you play DRL Valley, you wanna know how to mod it? Here we go. First thing you need to do is you need to go to nexusmods.com slash DRL Valley, and I will paste all these links in the description. This is link number one. This is where all the mods are available for download. Now the first thing that you really need is actually not on the DRL Valley mods. It is just a mod manager for any Unity game. So you want to go and search in Nexus Mods, not in DRL Valley, Unity Mod Manager. I will also include this in the description as link number two. So you need to download this specifically. It's the most important part that'll make everything run for you. Once you have the Unity Mod Manager, you download it and extract the file. You can go to unitymodmanager.exe, double click it to open the program, and then the Mod Manager opens. You need to find where your DRL Valley install is. So you select DRL Valley from the dropdown, and then you go and find the folder, navigate to it. Typically it's in Steam, Steam apps, then common, wherever you have the game downloaded. In my case, it's on the D drive rather than the C drive, because I have too many hard drives. And once you have all of that set up, you can then go to the mods tab. And in the mods tab, you've got a really helpful manager that allows you to see versions of all the different mods you download, and you can also just drag and drop mods in to install them. So if you get a new mod, you just drop it, the zip file as you downloaded it right onto this block here, and it'll install it. You can see this is the list of all the different mods that I have, and they're all located here. And we can see that they're all okay and that they are all up to date. This tool is really handy to see if someone has updated one of their mods, and uh, perhaps before you go shoot a video, you can then go and update them rather than just launch the game and then talk about how you didn't update the mod in game like I do. So. It's very helpful. One mod that you're going to need if you wanna have custom rolling stock, which is really, really important, is the custom car loader mod. So this will be link number three in the description. And this is what allows you to install new locomotives and cars. Now you install new cars and locomotives with custom car loader differently than you install the mod itself. The mod itself you install using the Unity Mod Manager, as we discussed, but to install new cars, you have to navigate to your DRL Valley folder. So here's the path that I took to get there. Again, Steam, Steam Apps Common, and then the game DRL Valley. You can check in Steam to see where yours is located as well. You click on the Mods folder, and here's where all of your mods live once they've been installed. You go into DV Custom Car Loader, and then your cars go here and your cargo go here. A lot of different downloads have just a cars folder that you can drag and drop right into this folder and merge. Sometimes they will be separate like this and you just drag and drop them into this place. So if you download Greg's class 86, you just drag that folder and then all the files for the locomotive should be right there. So you have mods, custom car loader, cars, and then the car folder individually. Same thing goes for the fun cargos as well. The next mod that you're going to need, if you want to change the skins of things, which is perhaps the most common thing that many want to do, if you wanna have different railroad liveries or paint schemes on your locomotives and cars, you need to have the skin manager mod. So you download the skin manager mod, and once you do that, you install it using Unity Mod Manager once again, but then it's going to install skins very similarly to Custom Car Loader. And I will be including this as link number four in the description. Okay, so we're back at our mods folder here. We have the Skin Manager mod. We have the Skins folder. And then there's a list of the different train car types and the skins go within them. And so we have Loco Steam H for the Steam Heavy. When we come in there, we then see the different skins that I have. ESD, Rio Grande, Rio Grande Steam Engine Skin, SH282 Union Pacific. So it's one more, more folder before the actual files, but you need to have the actual files within the correct location on here, which I think uh, is actually why my caboose does not work because I just dumped that in there because I did not have a car caboose and I'm not sure entirely what, uh, what folder that goes underneath. I would presume it would be car caboose but uh, I don't know. 
If someone knows, let me know in the comments, because some of these folders are not natively here. They actually come with the actual individual skins and you just drag them in here. And now to make sure that we didn't miss any steps as I was talking through things, let's install a couple of these different mods to make sure that you guys are following all the right steps. So I'm gonna download this mod first thing, Cybox Realism, which I have yet to do, goes to here and I don't have premium, so we just click slow download, but it's 496 kilobytes. We get millions of ads and whatever, but it supports the site. We download, there's the zip. Okay, great. I have my Unity Mod Manager pulled up. Here is the zip file for Zybok Realism as downloaded. I go to the Mods tab. I drag and drop the zip file there. And there it is. It's installed. That easy. And then we can get rid of the zip file. Now the mod is installed and we're ready to play. Super easy. Now let's do a custom car. We can see that our friend Boss, who also goes by Adri, has made a, another type of freight wagon of Yugoslavian origin. So we'll support Boss and we'll download this guy and add him to my game. So we'll get this downloading and we'll go find a skin to install as well. Someone's made a skin of the SH-282 that makes it look like the 4501. So I suppose we can download that and uh, install that one. That would be a neat skin to have. That's a good prototype 282. And then while that downloads, we will get that freight wagon pack installed. All right, so the freight wagon from Boss came as a RAR file. So we'll extract it to just a folder and then we pull up the folder and it just says cars. And then the ES EASZ is in there. Okay, so we, that's the folder that we need. Let's get our mods folder opened up again. I highly recommend you put a shortcut to this on your desktop, it makes it a lot quicker. We go to our DV custom car loader, and then we have cars folder and cars folder. So all we need to do is just drag it in here and it'll merge in. So we go in here and we can see the EAS Z is there. So now the car is installed, just that easy, okay? And next we're gonna have that Southern 4501 skin, so we'll get ready in the skin manager mod folder here. And the Southern 4501 came as a zip file, so we'll open that up as well. And what's inside? Southern 4501 SH282 skins. Okay, see? So everyone's slightly different in how they package their skins, so you gotta look for the right folders here. But you can see that they have the skins folder, so you could drag and drop this right here, or you could go inside and drag and drop the Loco Steam H and Loco Steam Tender. As long as you're merging the folders, it'll work. So we'll just copy those in there, and then we check. There's the Southern 4501, and inside that is the actual maps that actually make the skin work. And so now that's installed. So that's all you need to do to install these three different kinds of mods. Mods, skins, and custom cars for DRL Valley. I hope this is really helpful for some of you guys and hope answers the questions and gets right to the point. So thanks so much for watching guys and look forward to the next DRL Valley video coming soon.